today I'm going to show you step by step the process that I use to mount and wrap prints. Let's start by talking about what equipment we'll be using. Firstly I want to talk about tape. So you want to avoid using any masking tape, cellophane tape, parcel tape. None of those want to be coming anywhere near your artwork. Instead, I use cotton rag, archival gum tape, or something similar. This one's acid free, it's museum quality. Most importantly, it is designed specifically for hinging artwork. Uh, a weight. Um, you can buy weight specifically for mounting. Um, this one's just a sock filled with pennies does the job really well. A uh, tape measure, piece of kitchen roll, or you can use a clean cloth. A pot with a small amount of water in it. The tape that we'll be using is activated using water, but ordinarily I would keep this on a separate surface so that if the worst happens and you spill it, it doesn't come anywhere near your artwork. And lastly, a 5B pencil. This is what I use for signing and numbering the prints. So, now I'll show you how to start mounting. Now, before I actually mount a print, first I want to demonstrate to you the method that I use and talk a bit about why I use it. So, when you're mounting a print, what you don't want to do is put a long strip of tape all along one side or in all the corners. What you do want to do is give your print room to breathe and to make little tiny adjustments according to the humidity and the temperature. If you don't allow your print to do this, if you do tape on sides and in corners, the surface will buckle, which means that it will become wavy. Um, it's irreversible once it, do, once it does that, the print can't be saved. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to mount it using a method called T-hinges. So this involves absolutely no tape on the surface of your print, on the face of it at all. Which is really important because it also means that it's completely reversible. You can unmount it and it will look exactly like this again. So a T-hinge comprises of two pieces of tape, one small piece which overlaps onto the print by five to eight millimetres, one longer piece about two inches which is then going to sit over the top of this piece creating the T-hinge, attaching the print to the mount but in a completely archival and reversible way. So I'll demonstrate that for you now. Printout. This isn't an actual print, this is just a printout from the computer. And a piece of white card, just ordinary white card. And I'll be using these to demonstrate a T-hinge. So we'll start by cutting our tape. This is the Cotton Rag Archival Gum Tape. And we'll start by cutting two big pieces. And you want them to be about two inches. And then we're going to use two smaller pieces, about half the size. Okay, so this tape is activated by water, so at the moment it's not remotely sticky here on this shiny side, but we're going to take the kitchen roll, dunk it in some water, squeeze out the excess, and then I'm going to wipe that across the bottom centimetre or two of this tape. I'll just wipe it across and then immediately that's tacky. So then I'm just going to gently slide that in five to eight millimetres under the surface of the print and press down 
to ensure good contact. You can wear gloves if you want to, and we're just going to press down. Great. And now exactly the same for the second piece. Just wet the bottom two centimeters or so and put five to eight mil of that under your print and press down. You want to make sure you put it in from the edge. You don't want the tape to be right on the edge or on the corner of your print. So we'll press down. That's good and stuck now. So you can see the beginnings of our hinges here and um, already they're pretty firmly attached they're not moving at all so next we're going to apply the horizontal parts of the hinge so this is the part that actually attaches the print to the mount so for this one we're going to wet the whole piece so we're just going to run the kitchen roll across the whole piece of tape and then apply it on top of the vertical piece of tape and we're going to come as close to the top of the print as you can without overlapping onto the surface and then give that a really good press down to make sure it's got good contact and then we'll do the same with the next piece squeeze out the excess wipe across the whole surface and then we're going to put it over the tape nice and snug up to the print but not onto the surface and then we'll just press down so now you can see this print is mounted onto the card it's got these two T hinges in from the corners um, it's completely secure it's not moving, it's not slipping, it's not going anywhere but it's also really free. You can hinge it right up and it's free to make those adjustments with the humidity and temperature fluctuations. Um, these hinges are really strong. It's already being held completely in place. The only time I've ever had a hinge fail, tear, um, which is exactly what you want them to do. You want the hinge to be weaker than the print so that when it's put under duress it's the hinge that rips and not your print. And the only time that ever happened was when the gallery stored a portrait print landscape. And then of course this hinge was put under extreme stress. It was being pulled the wrong way. Uh, it was like that for weeks, possibly even months. And eventually the hinge tore and the print slipped. It was absolutely fine. It was simply a case of removing the tape and doing it all over again. But that's why we use this method, because it's reversible, because it's safe, and it really preserves the print. So now I'm going to show you how to do this on an actual print. Now we're ready to start mounting an actual print. So, I've got one here, all ready to go. Uh, these are printed for me by Art for Sight in Kent. Um, they do a really fantastic job. They also put these logos for me in the bottom corner. That's the Fine Art Trade Guild logo, which is an assurance to the customer that certain levels, certain standards have been adhered to in the production of the print. So inks, papers, processes. Um, you don't actually have to be a member to have this logo on your print. Uh, I do recommend it if you can afford it because I've yet to ask a question that they can't answer. But if you can't, all you need is for your printer to be a member and then they can put that logo on. So if you go on the Guild website and you search for a printer, hopefully there'll be one near you that you can try out. So that's the print, then we have the mount. These are made for me by my local framer, the Framing Lot in Dawlish. 
these are two separate pieces joined together by a strip of tape through the middle. Um, they do that part for me. This part is the undermount, so the solid piece that sits underneath is the undermount. And then this part here, with the cutout, with the aperture, that's the window mount. So, when we are mounting, what you don't want to do is attach the print to the window mount. It must only be attached to the undermount. So we're going to tape it only on this part here. And the first step is getting it in the right position. So that's simply a case of closing the mount, leaving your hands in place and just adjusting it until it looks right. Once you're happy that it's looking about right, what we can then start to do is measure. So we can double check and see if it needs any more adjustments. So I measure these two sides here and I'm measuring the space between the very edge of the mount and the very edge of the image. And that wants to be the same all the way up both sides. So I'll get my tape measure and you want to start, start a way in so as to avoid this metal bit coming into contact with the surface of your print. And then right to the edge of the mount, to the edge of the image, 1.5. This looks about the same. 1.5. That's the bottom, let's double check nearer the top. 1.5. One point five. So that's great. My logo at the bottom here has an equal amount of white space above and beneath it. Both of these sides have exactly the same border, so I'm comfortable that it's in the right position. What we'll do now is we want to keep it there. So we're going to apply a weight to my sock. Pop that right in the middle, and that will help hold it in place while we mount it. So now we're going to open this mount back up again. Our print is held exactly where it should be with the weight. And now we're going to work out where we want to put our hinges. So on a print this size, two hinges is plenty. Um, that'll hold it exactly where it needs to be. On a bigger print, or a much heavier print, you can easily do three or four hinges um, and that will be absolutely fine. If you're really nervous or you're really not sure, even on a print this size, you could do three or four and it will be absolutely fine. As long as you execute the hinges correctly, the number of them is not so important. But for now I'll be doing two. So, usually I would just put them roughly equally spaced. I've done enough of it to be able to eyeball it, but for today we'll do some measurements. So once again, come in on your tape measure to avoid this metal bit scratching anything. And this one is 37. So I'm going to divide that into three so that I can point out, so I can mark the thirds and know exactly where my two hinges are going. So that's 12.3, so we want to measure in from the edge of the print 12.3 and make a small mark on the mount, not on the print. There and there. And now I know exactly where my two hinges will be sitting and they're going to be completely equally spaced. Just like last time, we'll start by cutting the tape. So we want our two long pieces, about two inches, or longer if you prefer. And then the smaller pieces, which need to be about half that, about an inch or so. And this is the cotton rag archival gum tape. 
we're ready to apply the tape. So once again, we'll get our piece of kitchen roll, dip it in the water, squeeze out the excess. And don't forget, ordinarily, you want to store your water on a separate surface. Walk over to it, use it, and then walk back. But for now, I've got this here. So we're going to use the kitchen roll and we're going to wet the bottom centimetre or two of the tape, just as we did before. And then five to eight mil over the pencil mark under the print and press down. So the five to eight mil is a, a guideline. Really the idea is just not to have centimetres or inches of tape on the back of your print. Less is most definitely more when it comes to the overlap. If your print is really big or really heavy, you can do 10 mil or close to 10 mil. But if you end up going a few mil over, it's not the end of the world. It's just a guideline so that you always remember to keep it to the minimum. And then the second piece over the pencil mark under the print and we press down. Great. And now we'll do the horizontal pieces, the pieces that actually attach the print to the mount. So we're going to wet the whole surface of this, wet it all over, and then we're going to apply it over the top of this piece and just come up to the top of the print but never over onto the surface of it. Just come as close to it as you can comfortably. And then our second piece, wet the surface over the top, nice and close to the top of the print. There Press down to get good contact. And now we can remove the weight and we can close up the mount. And already this will be held securely. So I can stand it up, I can open it up and it's not going to go anywhere, it's not going to move. It's held nice and securely but with absolutely no tape on the surface and it's still got lots of freedom of movement. So it'll be held in exactly the right position so that it's got nice even borders but it's got room to make those tiny microscopic adjustments and prevent any buckling or waving on the surface. edition then part of the mounting and wrapping process will be signing and numbering your print. Uh, I do this with a 5B pencil and the reason you use a pencil is because pencil is permanent whereas pen will fade. Um, I have made the occasional mistake when signing and numbering and it's almost impossible to rub the pencil out and then write over it. So it is much more viable than a pen, it can't really be tampered with, but you do have to be quite confident when you go to actually write on it. So we do the signing and the numbering in this white border along the bottom. I do the numbering to the left next to the Trade Guild logo and I put my signature to the right. So we'll do the numbering first, 19 of 195, and then over here on the left in the middle I'm going to put my signature. You want that to be roughly the same on every print, try and keep it looking at least similar. 
uh, and that proves that it's a legitimate print I've signed and numbered it. The final step in the process is wrapping. We wrap a print so that it can be kept safe. It protects the surface from being touched, protects it from dust and dirt, it allows a gallery to store it in a browser, it also allows a customer to buy it and take it home without the surface ever coming into contact with anything. So I use a polyester wrap. This one comes from Preservation Equipment Online. It is advertised as the highest quality archival polyester wrap. This one is 36 micron thick. I've tried various thicknesses and this one, for me, seems to be ideal. It's thick enough to offer it good protection without tearing, but not so thick that it's pinging open every five minutes. So we'll start by putting the print on the wrap. I've got it on a roll here, on the wall. And we'll start by putting it face down. So because this is a limited edition print, I supply a certificate of authenticity with each one. It has the corresponding print number, uh, along with my signature and the date. Uh, I sign these in pen because traditionally they're not stored on show. When you get your print framed, these would usually be attached to the back of the frame and therefore not exposed to sunlight and not likely to fade. wrapped using all the correct methods and processes. It's signed, it's numbered, it has its certificate here ready to go. This print will last for years and years like this. So I really hope that was helpful. Uh, good luck with all your mounting and wrapping and thank you so much for watching.